Hello everyone, good day to all. My name is June and today I will present about an interesting topic that is uh, entitled Carp and Prawn Culture. When we heard and talk about the terms Carp and Prawn, there is one thing that we could think of correct, that is seafood. Delicious food for our family, especially when there is a special occasion. Looking at the photos, it is tempting and so yummy, but be careful with its cholesterol content. This is how I structure my presentation and detail the objectives of it. At the end of the lesson, we should be able to be familiarized or be familiar to polyculture and aquaculture. Understand the importance of carp and prawn culture in aquaculture and polyculture. And lastly, understanding the principles involved in both, uh, in both cultures. Right, this topic is under aquaculture and polyculture. Before we proceed with the benefits of polyculture, let me define first this aquaculture and polyculture. So what does, uh, what exactly do these terms mean? Polyculture is a form of agriculture in which more than one species is grown at the same time and place in limitation of the diversity of natural ecosystems. Polyculture is the opposite of monoculture in which only one members of the plant or animal species are cultivated together. While aquaculture is the breeding, rearing, and harvesting in, of fish, shellfish, algae, and other organisms in all types of water environments. Now what are the benefits of polyculture? Notice that it could increase the biodiversity of the pond, especially aquatic resources. It enhances the soil health. Um, it could eliminate the fossil fuel fertilizers and pesticides. And lastly, promotes clean water runoff. As I mentioned earlier, aquaculture is a process wherein um, it includes or involves breeding, rearing, and harvesting of fish, shellfish, algae, and other organisms, which is suited for water environments. And this uh, aquaculture, in addition, this is cultivating aquatic organisms specially made for human consumption. Alright, so let's move on or let's proceed. Uh, in other words or in other terms, aquaculture is also known as fish farming. There are some kinds of aquaculture limited to 1. Fish farming, shrimp farming, oyster farming, mariculture, alga culture, and cultivation of ornamental fish. Mariculture is known as um, marine culture, which uses a pen or um, an enclosures for the marine uh, life ecosystem for them to live or to grow. So let's proceed with the main content of my presentation. Carps are said to be best to culture in a polyculture way. More than one species in a pond or in a marine culture pen. It could make no harm if the species of carps are together growing in the same pen. This is also due to the role they're playing in the aquatic ecosystem as primary and secondary consumers. Most of them feeds on algae, aquatic plants, zooplanktons, and benthos. Another one, another important information that I would like to share with you is that um, 
it has different advantages such as efficiency, utilize of natural food, just like I mentioned earlier, that the carp are actually feeding on the aquatic plants and also the phytoplanktons and algae. Maximize production per unit area of pond, improve pond condition, and easy to handle with minimum technical know-how or procedures, and low capital in maintenance. Moving on, in taxonomy, it is uh, known as, or I mean, it came from the family of Cyprinidae, with the order Cypriniformes. So we have um, different species of carps. You will see or you will notice the, the common carp. The Chinese carps has a uh, biodiversity too. Um, silver carp, grass carp, big head, black carp, and mud carp. While the Indian carp, it has the katla, ruhu, and the regal. Now, uh, these carps are distributed worldwide. So in Europe, in Asia, North America, Africa, uh, in natural, Australia, South America, Madagascar, by human introduction. Here's the fan fact for um, this um, carps. Uh, the female deposits her eggs on to underwater vegetation where they adhere in a typical female may produce up to 300,000 eggs over the breeding season. Eggs take roughly four days to hatch. And another thing is that carp lived an average of 17 to 20 years, but some carp have been known to live up to 47 years in captivity. So that's how amazing carps are. Alright, now here's the thing. Uh, let's admit it. In the Philippines, in our home country, carps are, yes, they are known but not that famous in compared with tilapia. Regular consumers are unfamiliar with this kind of fish, but tilapia is one of the famous freshwater fish. Carps and prawns are both freshwater aquatic organisms cultured for human consumption, which does not fall in the top 20 most produced in the country. So from the um, slide that I am presenting right now, so this is the top most um, aquatic uh, resources or aquatic organisms that um, the country were producing. So you will notice that uh, there is an Indian sardines covering 20% of them. The round scad, which is 15. Uh, we, we have uh, yellowfin tuna, which is 10%. Skipjack, that is 18%. Now, um, looking at the details or looking at the numbers, um, Carps and prawns may be included here in other species, which is just 15% of it in total. So this one will be varied. It has a lot of other species included in it. So this is uh, from the 2019 research data of SEAF. DEC or Southeast Asia Fisheries Development Center. Now, here are some factors favorable carp to culture in polyculture system. I can say that they are flexible in a way that they can eat the available food for them depending on the season. They can tolerate different temperature ranges from 1 to 35 degrees Celsius, different pH levels from pH 5 to 9, and of course the dissolved oxygen which is small, uh, uh, lower than 1 milligrams oxygen per 
oxygen gas per liter and also the salt level which is 10 to 11 um, parts per trillion. Um, one good thing about the, the carp culture is that they are easy to, to spawn in captivity and high fecundity. That uh, it could, uh, the female uh, earlier I mentioned that um, in uh, during um, spawning or during the breeding season, it can lay 300 eggs, 300,000 eggs um, per, uh, per breeding. Or they can lay eggs 300 as as much as 300,000 um, eggs per breed in the brood stock and they can continue uh, for a few years they are easy to handle too with minimum care um, they can tolerate wide range and fluctuation of water quality and temperature they are not ter uh, not territorial uh, their behavior is not territory they are not aggressive it means that uh, they are not uh, going to to eat um, other kinds of uh, the fish even if they are still small or during their um, um, em embryo or like the newly hatch fish and of course um, for for the one who's um, taking good care of the carps little technical procedures that is just fine as long as um, we feed them as long as we we give them um, the food uh, that they are uh, requiring to eat then they will grow the the fifth one it has a low production cost it means that it can be low in the food chain i mentioned earlier that they feed on the first and second um a tropic level or i mean um, second and third tropic level for being um, primary and secondary uh, consumers, minimum capital, and minimum label energy. Now here are some fun facts about it. So the, the first one or the main um, source of this carb is from China. They are the world leading carb production country that can produce 2.2 million million tons or 69 percent of world's production of common carp in 2002 and then other carp pr major produ uh, producing countries could include india indonesia brazil russia and also myanmar now uh malaysia has also um uh, recorded as third highest in the in the world for this aqua culture production which is 10.08% um, uh, after tilapia which is 44.7% and catfish which is 36.7% now um, to continue um, let's talk about the principle of carp polyculture so the first one is the stocking density Okay, so um, why uh, the the fishermen are doing this um, polyculture for for the carp? It's because of economic purpose. Okay, because um, our market, uh, we also have a demand for the fish. That is once again for uh, simply for um, consumption. Um, the ecological niche needs to be filled. It's biologically correct ecosystem mathematically correct that without this fish or without the carps our um, ecosystem will be in balance i think that is uh, true and applicable to all organisms that all organisms living organisms they are playing a vital role in the ecosystem and uh, i mentioned that um, uh, the carps are very flexible whatever food that is available for them they will be able to eat and so they can survive little um, um, technical uh, procedures required for those who are actually like um, raising them or growing them and um, yeah little energy and labor available for stocking harvesting 
and also processing. Fish combination. So this is uh, one good um, principles too for this carp uh, production. So basically, um, for the fish combination, um, usually the sil silver carp and also the, the grass carp, they are combined together in a pond. Plus, this um, uh, with the likes of the tilapia, they can also be uh, they can um, be polycultured in there. So uh, because uh, tilapia and also the carp, both of them are non-predatory fish, so they can grow together, and um, they are also feeding in the same level of. Um, food chain or food level, uh, food tropic level. So these are the examples of the fish combination, carp combination. So the catla, the ruhu, the regal, and also the composite carp um, culture, which is the grass and also the silver carp. So all of them, they feeds on uh, different um, uh, different um, aquatic resources such as algae, plankton, rotifer, protozoa, mollusks, and also macropines. All right, so let's move on. Regarding the pond fertilizing and supplement, uh, supplementary food, the organic and inorganic fertilizer, it can be um, used uh, in there. And in here, um, well, um, the organic fertilizers coming from the manure of uh, the cow, poultry, and the pig, this one is uh, readily available when, whenever, whenever, um, uh, I mean, specifically in the agricultural places or in agricultural areas and of course since they are the waste therefore it is low cost for them so um, we, uh, why there is a need for pond fertilization for fund fertilizing so usually this is for the grasses to to grow because once again we have some grass carps that feeding on these um, plants or aquatic plants and uh, there are some also uh, that could contribute to the to the food source whenever a fertilizing uh, fertilizing or fertilizers are applied such as um, small organic particles they can actually feed on that and also for bacteria for aquatic invertebrates okay. like us uh, like the rotifers like the um, algae of course some uh, molecules or chemicals present from the fertilizers they will be, they will feed on that the, but the thing is in the long run or in the long um, um, uh, in the in the event that if the organic fertilizers keep on flowing on the pond well um, eutrophication can be or, or can happen there are some types of supplementary food feed is added to depending on fish ages and size. So there could be a ground cereal, whole grain, and also fermented cereal. So for harvesting and marketing, so it uh, it differs based from the demand of uh, per country. So such as um, for the Israel, um, they require four to six months, at least 0.5 to six um, kilograms and in per Europe, Europe um, two to three years which is one to 1.5 kilograms but here in Asia it's also uh, one to 1.5 kilograms um, which we accept also the smaller size of carbs so the yield it's extensive 0.4 or I mean 0.5 tons per hectare and semi-extensive which is two to three tons per hectare 
here are some challenges and restrictions for raising or for uh, the polyculture of the carp, such as the water deterioration and environmental pollution. I've mentioned that when um, the organic materials or when the, the fertilizers, when we keep on applying that one to the ponds for the grasses, for the algae to grow, it could lead into eutrophication and also some industrial um, pollu uh, pollution, water pollution. Fish quality can also be a challenge in here because some um, uh, safety of the aquatic product culturing in integrated culture system with manure and also with, with waste water. So, uh, in, in this case, um, uh, I, I mentioned that manure, it has this some chemicals too or some um, materials which later on could pollute the quality of water and so if the water is polluted therefore the fish quality will also be um, decreased and um, use uh, talking about the pollution uh, this one this could be uh, bioaccumulated so let's start first with the bacteria as they feed on that so when the bacteria um, uh, increase in their population in there which is um, which serve as a food for for other microorganisms for the diatoms and also for the phytoplanktons and also the zooplanktons um, this uh, bacteria in in fish ma muscles could leads into stress and sometimes this could be um, um, could be part of the bio um, magnification and bioaccumulation in humans in the long run. Disease, so disease such as uh, uh, that is caused by Iromonas hydropilla, okay, from the bacteria. Um, the pond water organic material concentration found to be positive correlated to a hydropilla population size. Fish bacterial septicaemia is a severe infectious disease, particularly susceptible to major Chinese carp. And lastly is the genetic degeneration, lack mass selection, and of course uh, the, uh, the, the strain for, for the inbreeding will also uh, decrease in here. Indicator of genetic degeneration such as slower growth for resistance to disease and early maturation. So if that's uh, if this um, if this water deterioration and um, eutrophication, fish quality um, diseases, and also the genetic degeneration uh, place um, uh, in the uh, polyculture, car polyculture. Therefore, the economic um, the economic um, status of the fishermen will be impacted or affected. Now let's talk about the the prawns, prawns culture. So um, this is the difference between the shrimp and also the prawns, but but both of them are crustaceans. So shrimp, uh, most of them can be found in salt water, while prawns are fresh water. I mentioned this one earlier. Um, shrimp are smaller, while prawns are bigger. And um, the shrimp has the plate-like gills, while um, the prawns, they, they got this branching gills. And you will see or you will notice from their uh, visible appearance is that um, the shrimp are curled while the prawns are straight. Now here's how uh, the prawns are distributed, identified, and also feed. So for the distribution, it's um, also uh, mostly from the Southeast Asia, the Indo-West Pacific region, from India to Vietnam, the Philippines. Yes, uh, we are also included in there. We are um, producers of this of prawn. In India, both east and west coast, mainly near river mounds and also backwaters. 
the identification i think i have mentioned this one already to to everyone i presented it and for the feeding they are omnivorous they feed on worms insects mollusk algae leaves and stem of aquatic plants so this is the culture process involved in uh, prawn culture so it could be traditional method and it could also be a modern method so the the traditional method in here it means that um yeah by by means of spawning uh in the uh in the pond and um later uh, there there, uh, there there will be um uh, the, the female is actually the one which will keep this um uh the eggs the fertilized egg or the seeds and then later on there will be um uh, reproduction and then the modern me modern method this could be done in a tanks hatchery phase uh, rearing till post larvae um, formation which is uh, 35 to 40 days and the nursery phase will be the development into juvenile form then release into grow out plants okay let's move on so you can see in here this is the um, post larva uh, post larva formation from the hatchery phase okay so a uh, breeding induced in spawning tanks wherein the female transfer the separate tanks as egg turns gray hatch larva kept in rearing tank salinity should be at least 14 plus and minus 2 parts per um, parts per, per trillion and feed on comprising egg custard and meat is given so, uh, and also for the larva metamorphose in 35 to 40 days there should have some small stones branches shells to put before metamorphosis to protect the larva talking about the the nursery phase um, the uh, post larva uh, develop into juvenile stage they are stocked in 2,000 uh, 2, to 3,000 per meter squared and they will uh, they will eat or they will feed on um, earthworm pieces, moina, rice bran pellets and later will be transferred to grow at plants. So here are some factors to consider in um, raising or in growing or in culturing the prawns. So selection of the sites water quality soil quality seed availability and also some other factors such as um, for, for the uh, selection of sites it must be um, regular and even bottom uh, for the water quality must be a, a clean water supply and of course it should not have any content of um, hydrogen um, sulfide soil quality must be clay composition with pH level at least unto um, neutral and there you have it those are the the factors that um, we have to um, uh, take note for uh, this um, prawn culture so for the grow out ponds, uh, grow out ponds, especially it must be it must be uh, specially prepared for them. And uh, sometimes uh, from from the video that I have um, um, watched in YouTube, there are some uh, some of them are like putting uh, the males males into males first and the females to male uh, male male into male female into male at first before um, the seeding um, season okay so you will not this so mostly if this uh, if the color is like this um, the the point of reference is that if they are like darkish or blackish they are males but if there are some um, uh, orangey colors uh, at the middle of them at the middle of the body therefore they are females because that's the aim and these are the uh, geographic 
for the global producers of uh, this um, prawn culture or the prawn. So Philippines, we are also part of, but not that huge in compare with other nations or other countries. So these are the references um, that I used here in my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you get something from my um, presentation. Really sorry for my voice. I'm having some um, colds right now. <laughs> All right. Please keep safe and have a great day. Bye-bye, everyone. God bless you.